guys, what's up? It's your boy the Kryptonian Sagan in here bringing you a review for One Piece chapter 239. Very, very entertaining chapter. In particular, the first, I would say the first three quarters of the chapter. Very funny. Once again, Oda goes back to his fail safe whenever you're about to get new information or things are about to get, you know, pretty heavy. We're going to get a lot of comedy. And just to see the straw hats lounging on the fuzzy wuzzy chairs as Chopper calls them and to see how Luffy tells Zoro, oh bad anchor, don't worry about dropping that. We're gonna go explore the island, right? And that was funny simply for the reason that Zoro's reaction was just like mine, because Zoro was just like, don't worry about the anchor. Like what the hell is this dude talking about? And then after I see Zoro drop the anchor, I say, you know what? Luffy's got a really good point because what could happen is they could drop that, that uh, anchor. And because it doesn't have a floor, they could end up sinking the, go the, the Mary go. So that was, that was interesting. I was like, wait a second, Luffy, Luffy's a big ass troll, okay? Like Luffy trolls. But every now and then he says something smart. Every now and then he says something smart. And it's just like, I feel stupid at this point because I'm so enjoying One Piece that I'm still critical. But you'll have a few chapters where I get so immersed into the story that I don't get as critical because I'm just enjoying it. You know, and that's what happened right here. So Luffy got me. He snuck up and got me at one point. It's almost like I went boxing with Floyd Mayweather and Mayweather hit me with that right hook and I didn't see the shit coming. Like, that's what happened right here. But... The other thing is, is you got Luffy, he sees this nut, and he tries to bite down into it, ends up losing the tooth, and he tells Usopp, hey Usopp, I found a nut, catch. Usopp gets it, tries to eat it, and you, it's, this is off-panel stuff, you don't see it, but I'm just kind of imagining it at this point. But Usopp's like, ow, and you know, he bit into it, hilarious. But at the same time, Oda left a nugget in there, okay, because Luffy says, this is the smell of adventure, which that's corny as hell. I'm praying that is a viz, like a vizlation, okay? I'm praying Luffy didn't say that. That is corny as fuck. That is right there with Mike Guy saying the power of youth. I hate that. There's a deep meaning behind it, just like Luffy saying this is the smell of adventure, but at the same time, it's just super corny. You know, I pay, I pay attention to language, sorry. But the thing is, is Nico Robin says something that I found interesting. She said... So this is what an adventure is to you, going out and exploring. And it's just like, that's what adventure is. That's why, you know, you go to different, like in America, right? You know, I know I've got some uh, viewers from overseas, so I'll just broad th broaden this out. You know, I'm going to use America, but I'm going to go a little further after that. But, you know, like for me, like I have a lot of people I know. I've, one of my closest friends never left the city I'm in, right? And I, I tell them, like, you have to go out, you have to see the other parts of the country, get to get out the South, get to see other regions. You have to, you have to know that there's something else out there than what you're used to, okay? So the reason why I'm saying that is, you know, if I can say, hey, yo, you need to try this, yo, like, to have that and then to then turn around and have somebody like Zoro basically say, like, I'm going out to explore and Nico Robbins says, I never viewed it that way. I, I can relate to that because you know, that's like I'm trying to get my dude Vince to try other things, go other places. You know, for instance, you know, uh, it's football season and some uh, friends of his, they're getting ready to go to the Seahawks game, right? And I'm like, just go. You've never been to Seattle. Go, 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 go enjoy yourself. Like that type of thing. Couldn't get him to go because there was something else going on downtown. Like, that, I, I can't rock with that. That's my dude. But, you know, like when you do stuff like that, you know, you're, you're missing out on life. You're you're enjoying life as you know it, but you're in the bubble. And I feel like for Miss All Sunday or Nico Robin, that's exactly what happened. Now, I'm having a little trouble not calling her Miss All Sunday because she's been Miss All Sunday for a very long time. But with Nico Robin, it's the same thing. You know that she's seen other places, but how long was she on that island with Crocodile too, though, you know? And then the other thing, looking for her, uh, for her, looking at the different places that she's been is probably always looking over her shoulder. So she's never had a chance to relax. And I like how 
you can also see that conveyed in with Nami because I was like, what's going on with Nami, man? Like in that live reaction I did, like I said, I probably won't put that up because I don't really like that. And I give a few comments when I do live reactions, but at the same time, I don't give a lot of in-depth analysis. You know, I don't like to speak too much when I read. But the thing is, is Nami, I was going like her expression something's going on i'm getting vibes she's got a different motive and i was getting all on park vibes not that she was going to betray anybody but more there was something else to her demeanor right and it turns out that that was the case basically for nami the whole reason that she's enjoying what's happening is she says that the navy can't find them and they can enjoy the beach you know they always stop at ports but they're never there long because they're basically on the run. They've got bounties, or whether Luffy has a bounty, now Zoro has one, but being a straw hat, she's guilty by association. And I thought that that was interesting because it explains a lot with Nami because one of the things I've noticed is since we've been in the Grand Line, if you go back to Lube Town and you go from Lube Town on, Nami, and you know I'm paying attention to her. That's, I love, I love the character. And... That's one of my favorite characters. So, from Luke Town on, if you just pay attention to Nami's interaction, right? I guess you call this homework, too. But if you pay attention to how she interacts with people and uh, just her character, she's been getting more and more tense as they've gone deeper into the Grand Line. And I'm really expecting a moment where she has some type of breakdown or whether she gets to an emotional wall and she either breaks down and she rises above it. Not sure how Oda's going to handle that, but, you know, I've always said that Nami and Usopp are the regular people on the crew, and it's really struck me because I don't recall Nami just breaking down into tears and, like, yes, during our long park, but I'm talking, like, uh, before that, just breaking down into tears because of some dangerous thing that's going on. I don't recall that. I might be missing it. Correct me if I'm wrong. But it just seems like we're seeing it more and more often since they've gone into the Grand Line, in particular the last few chapters. And I just feel you know, my emotional spider sense is going off. You know, I don't know when it's going to happen, but something emotionally is going to happen with Nami. With the way Oda paces things, it might be 100 chapters from now, but something's going to be going on with Nami, man. I just, I can feel it. Like the same vibes I was getting when she was at Buggy and you're seeing that there was something else to the character and it took like... It almost took 100 chapters. I think it was like around 60 before we got to the whole Arlong stuff. So that's kind of what I'm talking about. Like, you know, something's coming with Nami. Just don't know what. But her whole thing, it just speaks volumes to the human sight. Because for people, that type of stress eventually gets to you. And it can either make you or it can break you. I know that's cliche. And the thing is, this is so true. You know, I don't know where Oda's going to be taking this, but that's, that's something I want to keep my eye on. I thought that was very important. Staying on the Nami thing, and this is part of the analysis, you know. I just don't tell you the guys the chapter all over again. You know, I might give you a, a synopsis of the chapter, but I like to focus on a few key things and just bring some stuff to your attention. One thing I found interesting was, you know, the women in this chapter, okay, like on the cover, uh, the cover story, you have a woman. Nothing really blows you away about the, about her. She looks like a regular Jane, if you will, a Jane Doe. But and especially with Oda, because Oda can't draw women for shit. But the thing is, is you have a woman on that one, and then you have Nami. Nami shows up, and when the South Bird is just, you know, beating on her because it's pointing south. South's down there, obviously. But the thing is, is uh, Nami went from having a shirt to she's in some cut-off jeans and cut-off capris, and she's in a bikini top. She's showing off her cleavage. Nothing wrong with that, right? But what I thought was interesting is Nami, there's this panel of her, right? They're all on the beach, and, like, you got... This is your edge, right? Like, where my hand is on the screen. Like, it's that's the edge. Nami is about right here. This is the middle. Nami is about right here. She's stretching out, so she's almost in the middle. But, like, when you take into consideration her breasts are pointed 
like they're coming towards the reader at that point and that's a fan service type thing it's very subtle and when the mangaka do it that way i don't really mind it i catch it and i'm aware of what they're doing but at the same time it's a little disturbing to me and this is gonna sound so ironic i can already picture some of you guys might motherfucker you review fairy tale guys are stripping naked uh, the women, like especially Lucy, she loses her top for no reason. You know, you had the scene uh, in the Grand Magic Games where the dragon sneezed and Lucy lost her top and Natsu's return, which I don't know if by the time you guys see this video if I will have already done the Avatar arc, but, you know, Natsu returns and he's pumping out so much magical energy that it gets so hot that Lucy's clothes disintegrate and he's not even near her. So, just seeing... Seeing that, I can already picture you guys, Mike. You can't you have no right to talk about Oluwa fan service. The reason why I'm going to do it is it's prevalent in this chapter, not to the same levels as Fairy Tale. But the reason why this disappoints me a little bit is I feel like Oda doesn't have to resort to this. You know, like Hero, I get why Hero uses the fan service, and in no way am I saying Hero is on the same level. I'm not saying that he's nowhere near the same level as. Uh, is a cheer of Oda when it comes to storytelling. But what I will say is that I don't expect it from Oda, okay? Like, Hero, I knew to expect it because it's in the first chapter. Lucy, she's following her assets. You know, like, okay, this is going to be used as a joke in entertainment. And I would be really interested to know what mangas were doing really well when One Piece came, well, not came out, but when this chapter came out. Because I'm looking at the rankings for this chapter, not this chapter, but the, uh, the, for where One Piece is being sold and there's not a lot of European countries on there. It hadn't even made its way to America yet. And they've got, you know, Brazil, so there's a little Latin America stuff. But I, I'm looking at, I'm going, I'm wondering if Oda was under pressure to kind of ramp up the fan service the last 50 chapters, because that's about what it's been. And the reason I'm saying that is like, you know, Nami, all of a sudden it's like, oh, Nami has breasts. Vivi has breasts. Miss Saul Sunday has breasts. Like, it's just like boobs are just coming out. And all of a sudden, Nami's got a belly button. Didn't have one when we first saw her. When Mr. Three with the candle stuff, like, didn't have one when she fought uh, Miss Doublefinger. Miss Doublefinger had cleavage out. I mean, it's just like I'm seeing a lot of boobs. I don't mind it. I'm a boob guy. I'm a stomach guy, too. So I just love both, like a flat stomach and breast. Like, I love shit. So I don't mind it. And I know it seems like I'm harping on it, but it's partially because I'm disappointed because I feel like the story content that One Piece has been delivering to us is so great that it doesn't need to resort to stuff like this. Like, even though Oda does it in a subtle way, and chances are when you read this, you don't even catch it. But it's the fact that I caught it, and I know that it's going on. It just really sits out at me, man. So this is more of a rant than an actual review. But at the same time, when you look at that, and then you look at how he does Miss All Sunday or uh, Nico Robin, it's just like, oh, this is this is beautiful. This is tasteful. You know, Nico Robin, awesome design. It's not on the same level as uh, Taite Kubo when he does the fashion designs and everything for the uh, cover art, you know, where each go and the other characters and, you know, clothes. So it's not on that same level. But the thing is, it's, you know, Miss on Sunday, she's got the armband, blouse, like everything looks nice, man. Even the hair is just slightly done. So I like that. And then you have this, um, what's her name, Kunis, uh, like the chick that shows up to Sanji's just like, oh, you must be an angel. Like that, like even with her, like that's cool. Like that's a very interesting design. Like the designs, like that's part of why I paid attention to the fan service aspect because this chapter, while there is information in it, the actual designs, it, it Oda stepped it up for this. Like, this design that this chick has and then that her father has, he's so... Or Hesso, that is really good. It's really good. I like the designs, like, the as far as the outfits. You know, Oda, Oda stepped up. You got to give him props for this, man. But I like how the girls got kind of like, like a harpy thing going on. You know, really good. Really, really good. But when her father shows up, you know, basically... 
that's when we find out Luffy actually did something interesting. He actually was useful when he was salvaging because that air vehicle that he brought up is actually what the guy has and Nami's trying to figure out how to use it. And that's how the chapter ends off. And what I thought was interesting about that is Nami was there for the fan service and yet, bam, what do you have? Nami, she's making things useful. And that's how I'm tying this in. Because while Nami was kind of used for the fan service, she was also there for plot. And that's why I wanted to kind of focus on the fan service part because she did have a role at the end and it was there for a cliffhanger. And that's why I said when Oda uses fan service, it's not in the same way that a hero Mashima uses it or Taite Kubo used it in the final arc or uh, Akira Toyama did it in the first parts of Dragon Ball. That's boom. Nami is Boma at this point. That's that's why it hit me because Boma was pimped out to this extent too in Dragon Ball, and yet at the same time, Boma was a necessary character and she progressed the plot forward at certain points. And that's what Nami just did with this. You know, it's just like it's almost like they're poking fun at fan service at this point. So that's pretty cool, man. That's pretty cool how it kind of goes in, and I can kind of see the whole Dragon Ball connection now. Because that is, that is a page straight out of Akira Toyama's book. And I got a Dragon Ball scene in my head. Now, I'm not going to go in there with it because I can't see the timer. But I know this review's dragged on. And so what I will say is let me know two things. What do you think about my observation with the fan service? Keep the fairy tale flame wars out of this shit. Keep it out. Keep it out because I didn't compare the series too much. All I did was just say, like, uh, keep it out. Keep this shit friendly, okay? Now, the other thing is, is my other question, is what was your favorite moment? Like, there's a lot of funny stuff going on in this chapter, so what was your favorite moment? Uh, for me, if I had to pick something, it would be Luffy biting down into the coconut, man. Or Sanji getting his ear pulled because Nami's just like, did you really just call this bitch an angel? You're in my way. Like, that was funny to me. So what was your favorite funny moment? But as always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, hit that like button, comment, rate, subscribe, share. I will greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.